Hey everyone and welcome to this very simple tutorial where I want to walk you through these two animations I created for an exhibit at a museum. These are very simple to achieve in After Effects and my whole animation design philosophy is that I like working in systems and I like avoiding manual keyframing whenever I can. So I want to keep the keyframing to a minimum. So we'll just set this up really quickly and you'll see that you can achieve a similar look in no time. I'll click this new composition button here and call this composition checkerboard because I'm only creating this for social media. A resolution like this is fine, which is rather low. If I were to create this for some huge screens in the city, I would have to bump this up quite a bit. So in general, it's always better to start with higher resolutions because it's always easier to scale down than it is to scale up. But for this demonstration, this is fine. 30 frames per second, press OK. Next, I'll create a new solid by going up to Layer, New, Solid. Call this checkerboard as well. Uh, make comp size, press OK. And to this, I want to add the checkerboard effect. So I'll go over to Effects and Presets and search for checkerboard. Drag this onto the solid. And you'll see this just creates these black and white patterns. It's kind of trippy when you scale it up and down. I want to set this width slider to something around 200, I think is fine. Maybe just a bit more so we can get rid of this white edge here. That's good for now. Next, I'll create a new composition again by going to Composition, New Composition. This time I'll make this 1080 by 1350 because this is a good format for social media. I'll call this main. This is where our whole scene will be set up. Press OK. And I'll just drag in my checkerboard composition into this main composition I just created. Cool. So the whole heart of this animation is the CC cylinder effect. So I'll just go to effects and presets and search for CC cylinder and drag this onto my checkerboard layer. You can see this just wraps the whole texture around a 3D cylinder. But as you can also see, we have sort of a weird see-through thing going on and we don't want that for this animation. So I'll just go back into my checkerboard composition, click this layer and make sure that my blending mode is set to normal and not to none. This should get rid of our transparency issue. Yes, beautiful. You could probably already tell in which direction this is going. The idea here is that anything we add to this composition will then be wrapped around our cylinder. So what I did in my original example is I just essentially added text to each of these squares and then rotated the whole cylinders to achieve this animation. So I can do this by just pressing command T, clicking somewhere and creating a letter like the letter R and scaling this up and just placing this in one of these squares. By the way, I'm pressing tab here just to bring up this composition navigation tool. This allows me to quickly go in and out of compositions that are nested within each other. And you can see the letter R now appears in our cylinder. So if I create a new camera, we could just quickly check out this whole scene in 3D. This is good, but I just want to keep this camera static for this animation. So to achieve this first animation, all I did was essentially zoom in on this camera until I like the frame. This is good. And then I went into the position property of my cylinder effect and just moved this over so it just fills half of the frame. Something like this, 315. Seems like a good value. And I then duplicated this whole layer by pressing Command D. I did the same thing, but just adding a negative sign. So now we have the left and right frame filled with two cylinders. Honestly, the CC cylinder effect has to be updated at some point. It's really outdated in my opinion, but it's still useful for some things. But I just hate how it doesn't really interact with any of the After Effects lights. So if I create a new After Effects slide here, you'll see it really does nothing to our CC cylinder because the effect has lighting control built into the effect itself, which is kind of tedious, but whatever, we'll work with this. So just to flatten this out a bit and not have this shading going on, what I'll do is I'll go into my shading and bump up the ambient light to something like this and also decrease my specular and also decrease my metal. This will just flatten the whole thing out a bit. I'll also do the same thing for the other one. I think I had what 100 and decrease specular to zero, metal to zero. I'm also going to change the lighting direction of my first layer because you can see we still have some sort of shadow going on here. Nice. Okay. 
So the idea now is that we want to bring up the rotation value of each of these cylinders and have them turning inwards. So I'll do this by going to my first layer and then just bringing up the rotation, pressing the stopwatch for the Y rotation here. And I'll do the same thing for the other layer as well. Cool. Now I'll select both of my layers by holding shift, pressing U to bring up all the keyframe properties. This is a really nifty shortcut. It helps you save a lot of time. Starting off at zero frames, I'll just go to 50 frames and then I'll rotate this first layer, which is the left one and rotate it by, I'd say negative 90 degrees should be good. And I'll do the opposite for the layer below. So I'll push this to positive 90 degrees. So this is essentially the first step. These keyframes are still linear, so they have no easing at all, which is why the movement is very constant and looks unnatural. This is something you typically want to avoid. So let's just easy ease all of these keyframes by pressing F9. But what I also like doing is just pressing this graph editor here, uh, selecting the second keyframes and just bringing this handle more to the beginning. This creates a harsher starting curve which means the animation will start off a bit more explosively and then just ease into its final position. Cool. So now all that's left to do essentially to create this is just to fill in the squares however you want. So I'll just demonstrate this once more. I'll just click into one of these compositions. I can duplicate this text piece and maybe bring it over here, change the color to black because it's on a white square. I'll just also make this a lot smaller make sure this fits and when i go back you can see we now have this effect of the name just being revealed and if we keep this animation going we can always reveal new information which is i think why it works you just have this constant flow of new tiles coming in and then it also has a very nice loop because it's just our cylinder that's being rotated on the y-axis so if i go to 100 frames and just keep the same animation pace going. So from minus 90 to minus 180 and from plus 90 to plus 180, you can now see this animation coming together. Beautiful. So this is essentially what I was talking about when I was mentioning building systems when you're designing and animating, because we only have a couple of keyframes here and we've created this interesting animation in just a couple of minutes. By the way, I don't think I've ever shown this really, even though this feature has been out forever. But one reason, actually the main reason I love using my mockups over other mockups is because of this After Effects file here. Because the way I use this, I can just drag this into my project, open this up, and I have the mockup open in After Effects, which means I can just drag in the animation in here directly instead of exporting it and importing it into Photoshop and then exporting it back from Photoshop and then having to go through that whole process again once I want to make some changes. This one is free, by the way, on my store right now. You can get this at loopformat.com, 100% free. Just download it, try it out. So I can just go into my Your Design Comp here and drag in this mock-up and then boom, done. So you're going to get this with all the screen mock-ups I sell. Great for motion design. Let's create this second animation here. Really easy to replicate all I have to do to go from this to this is just you know delete one of these click this layer go to my effects reverse this position change we made earlier then I'm also gonna double click my camera and make it a bit more wide angle I used a 135 millimeter camera before I'll go to 24 for this one obviously I then have to change the zoom level or the position of my camera I'll hit P and just go back in here. And then what I'll do is I'll duplicate this again. And on the second copy, I'll just change this render mode from full to inside. And this means if I now change the radius, it's only going to render the inside of the cylinder. And I can just scale this up a bit and it will have the exact same animation, but behind our main cylinder. And that's basically how you can achieve this second animation right here. With these systems, I always encourage you to play around with all these different settings and just try to see what you can come up with. Maybe even go for a different camera focal length. You could go for something ultra wide, like 15 millimeters and go really crazy. Try things out. You know, there's a million ways to achieve different results. You can also try changing the colors of this by just adding a background solid, creating a black background. 
then creating a new adjustment layer, for example, and then adding the tint effect in the effects and presets over here, drag the tint onto the adjustment layer. And then I can just change this black to something like red. I always go for very black and white designs, but using color can be fun as well. Cool, I hope you enjoyed this very quick tutorial. Be sure to get the free mock-up and see you next time.